Okay, today I would like to introduce you to one of the easiest species to identify no matter what time of year, Carpinus caroliniana or musclewood. Uh, it's also called American hornbeam or ironwood um, or a few other names, but musclewood is the perfect name for it because look how muscular it looks. It looks like a very, very uh, muscular tissue underneath a very thin skin. Um, the trunk grows in this fluted fashion that makes it look like striations of, of sinewy uh, muscle fibers. And um, they get a lot bigger than this. This is kind of the average size that you'll see. A tree that's maybe 20 feet tall, I'll get, you know, 30, 30 to 50 feet is kind of their maximum range. Um, more of an understory specialist. Um, but uh, that bark is very distinctive, even on younger species. You'll get this fluting, uh, that muscle-like tissue. Um, it's called ironwood because it has very, very, very hard wood, um, and it's used for things that require very hard wood. So tool handles. Um, I've also read that it's, it's kind of prized for walking sticks. I imagine, though, that that's because of the texture rather than uh, the strength of the, of the wood per se. Um, but also uh, wooden golf club heads, I believe, were, were made out of ironwood um, because of how dense and hard the wood tissue is. Um, but so, again, it's a specialist of our, um, of the kind of mid-story of our forests, um, often found not on necessarily drier sites or super wet sites, kind of in the middle, a mesic sort of site, does like moist soil. Um, it can be found in bottomland forests, um, and you'll find it every once in a while on a ridge top, but usually where it is is places with medium fertility, medium moisture. Um, so it is in the birch family, Betulaceae, and so it has a lot of characteristics that look a lot like birch, um, other than, again, that very distinctive bark. Um, but uh, a leaf here, and we can see a lot of leaves are persisting on this individual, um, but I found this one on the ground. So we can see, first of all, the margin is doubly serrated. So we have very, very fine serrations um, that are a lot tighter together uh, than a lot of our species that have serrated leaves. Um, additionally, something to really look for is they have an uneven base or an asymmetrical base. So we could see um, this left side and this right side just start at different places on the rachis. And then finally, um, they tend to have an acuminate tip where things come together um, uh, very sharply towards the top. And it's hard to see because this guy's all desiccated um, from a winter of being on the forest floor. Um, on the note of the forest floor, I was digging around a lot for their fruits um, and couldn't find any. So they must be uh, very tasty or else we would have found more. Um, they bear those fruit um, in about midsummer. Um, so there was a lot of time for turkeys, squirrels, possums, all sorts of stuff to, to eat those nutlets up. Um, they, so they're nutlets. Um, when the leaves start to break is when I usually see the reproductive organs, which just like other members of the birch family uh, are called catkins. Um, once those develop, uh, you get these very small little nutlets that are surrounded um, by what's called an involucre, uh, which is a series of bracts um, or modified leaf tissue. They're these weird little lobed, kind of L-shaped almost uh, bracts that surround that nutlet. Um, a very round little nutlet. Um, and again, you'll see those in kind of midsummer, but there's really no reason to look at any other identifying feature uh, other than that bark. Um, just very, very, very distinctive. Um, while we have one with some low branches, we can also look at the buds. They are not incredibly distinctive either. Um, they tend to have the, the branches, um, the, the twigs rather, um, are pretty firm, but uh, very slender. Ooh, we got a little spider there. And you can see they kind of look like other members of our birch family where we have uh, overlapping scales, kind of shingle-like buds. Um, they are a lot smaller and more dainty than a lot of our other species, like our sweet birch, will look. Um, but uh, yeah, so musclewood, good species, not, you know, uh, necessarily preferred for, for any particular reason, but uh, nice diversity in our understory, um, a good native species to have around. Uh, a lot of different lepidopterans will, um, will eat their leaf tissue as caterpillars, and again, those nutlets provide a lot of protein for birds, squirrels, uh, all sorts of other critters, and humans too. People can eat them, but it's usually not worth the effort because uh, they're pretty small. Here we go. Musclewood, Carpinus caroliniana.